Welcome. Um, this is my portion of the show, which is called The Space Between Two Rocks. It's comprised of um, these small photographic images that are um, instant film prints. And this particular series is called Low Season. These prints were made primarily um, during walks throughout um, different parts of Thailand. And as you progress through uh, the sequence, the show actually ends with some images of Westerville, Ohio, where I'm from. And so this work has a lot to do with travel, which is integral to um, the position at which I make work from and my identity and how my identity was formed as my mom was an immigrant from Thailand, um, from urban Thailand. And my father is from a rural farming community in north central Minnesota. So reconciling that, contemplating in that, and being in that space of these disparate geographical uh, and cultural locales um, is sort of at the crux of the work. And I use uh, walking as a way to um, enter into that space and, and create the work. So walking and being outside and being on location has become um, my actual studio space. So instead of going to a, you know, a small warehouse or a basement and kind of getting into the, the mood or the mode of making art, I am um, like a traditional photographer and then I go out into the world and um, experience particular moments. And that is really important for me to feel like you know, connected to the history of photography, um, where we're traditionally waiting for something to happen, um, trying to capture and hold something from the world, um, and give it meaning. And that meaning in my particular work is just shedding light on a kind of a mixed race or mixed heritage experience. Um, with COVID-19 being what it is, um, a lot of the work will be experienced through social media. So I thought about that and how I um, installed the works as well. Um, and I guess lastly, in terms of the installation in the physical context, I was thinking about um, on these days beyond the gallery opening, you know, one or two viewers actually having the time and the space to get close to the works and, and have a little bit of a navigation around and through them um, and go on that particular uh, formal and narrative journey. Uh, and so some of these were, like for instance, these two kind of a diptych were placed together um, as a way to force a relationship between this idea of absence and then presence. And for a moment, they look like they're a before and after shot, which they aren't. And I thought a little bit about matching the light up with these two shots. And these two photographs are taken, you know, a year apart, in, um, totally different places. And so forcing that relationship by asking the viewer to come close and investigate um, and have a moment with the works, I thought about that and using this kind of intimate space in that way as well. So part of the position I make work from is being a, simultaneously being a tourist and a local. And so, and that applies to these different places I live and currently right now living in Ohio, but not being from Ohio. Um, but also in this case here, Thailand, where, you know, again, I have family there, but when I experience the place, when I walk through these spaces, um, I'm comfortable on one level, but also have this fascination, um, like a tourist would being in a foreign land. And so this idea of who is actually foreign, is it this place or is it me, it's all sort of conflated and mixed together. And that's sort of the creative space um, that these works come out of. And so there's this fascination with this um, being on an over like an L train like that in Chicago. They have a system there in, in Bangkok and I'm shooting down at this pickup uh, soccer game. Um, and there's this fascination with this local activity happening in a really super dense urban space. And then also thinking metaphorically of these forms and lines that are clashing or coming apart or being assembled, um, shadows, you know, with something that's visually sharp and resolved. So these sort of in-between spaces that represent, again, the position that I'm making the work from. Um, here's a watercolor that's been totally rained on um, and then is now a clean slate. So something that was something that's transformed um, and then you continue to transform. Um, and then, you know, just juxtapositions of texture, uh, you know, growing wood and, and you know, uh, formulated uh, 
material culture stuff kind of all in one. And then just thinking about how these pairs sort of bring out the best in the, the formal and, and compositional nuances of the individual images. And this grouping of images that comes towards the end or almost at the end of the, the narrative sequence, a couple of these are actually shot at Westerville. And so that process of walking and contemplating, um, and I should reference, you know, a text, a, a recent text by Frederick Gross, a French philosopher who wrote a book called um, The Philosophy of Walking. And that's been something that has been um, influential and um, sort of inspiration for using walking as a, as a space to, or a studio to make art. And so these are Uptown Westerville, this is where I live, it's a great community. Um, and of course, so these are quasi-urban walks that I will do, just having the camera with me. Um, and then there's Alum Creek, which, you know, like, uh, you know, going back to being like a 10 year old boy and just exploring the ravine and the woods and the stream in the backyard. There's a lot of opportunity for that, even though it's like a pretty suburban or urban kind of setting. Um, it's pretty undisturbed. And so there's, uh, my golden retriever carrying a huge log in his mouth. Um, and so. Those are some examples of these exploring these spaces. Also in that, you know, personal in-between space of being, trying to figure out like what my place is here and, and, you know, in relationship to other parts of me geographically and culturally. Um, and to reference another book, there's this uh, great writer, uh, contemporary writer, Pico Iyer, who writes about, um, he's an essayist and he's of Indian descent that lives in Tokyo. Um, so he writes from that same position, but he came up with a, a term called global soul and there's a book of the same uh, name and it just basically talks about how um, there are certain people that feel because of their backgrounds, they feel a little bit um, at home anywhere and then also, you know, not at home anywhere at the same time. So it's a sort of in between existence and I think it's becoming more common, um, you know, as you know, it sounds trite, but as the world is becoming more intertwined. These works, um, although abstract and quite different in terms of scale and aesthetic from these others that I was talking about, these smaller photographic prints, um, these are actually a photographic process called a cyanotype, um, also known as the, uh, in more informal term, uh, sun prints. And so these are light sensitive pieces of paper um, and all of these prints, these are unique prints, one of a kinds, were made during an um, artist residency in a very remote part of Sweden. And I've been talking about the, the, the Thai and Asian side of my uh, background, and the other side is um, Scandinavian. And so um, there was an opportunity for me to, to do a residency at a small um, rural museum that had some cabins on a lake, um, and it was a great experience to make works um, in the way that I like to make them outside. And so there was this huge slab of rock that jutted out into this lake, um, and I had a tray and these print, these sensitized papers, and I would be by the lake and lay various objects on them, expose them to sun, and then you get this impression. So some of these are more straightforward and you see the shadow but it's uh, the form of a, of a lake rock of some sort and then one of the days it started raining on me as the, the weather that far north just changed very quickly and those droplets of water and as they ran off of the paper um, slowly were, sense, were exposed to the light and actually then the outline of that water running or the dripping um, as in this case right here and here were captured on the paper. Um, so although they're very abstract in comparison to the more visually resolved images, they also um, use the same process of being outside and walking and being in a, creating a certain kind of contemplative space, but also handling the work. Because these instant prints, these small prints, they come out of the camera um, and you hold them and the weather, the wind, the humidity affects how they develop. You put them in your pocket, you walk again a little bit, you, you look at it and it might influence the next shot you take. So there's all this hands-on things that are happening outside in the process. So this is actually a very similar process, a little bit slower and not moving around as much, but very similar.